Hey everyone, and welcome to Never Podcast Alone. Today we're talking about Never Play Alone's newest endeavor, our very own Rust server. We're joined today by the community and communications manager at Path Tempest and founder and managing director of Wasteland, as well as the founder of RustAdvance.com. We're also joined with our very own Rust game leader, Dirty South, and Rust XO Smash Up. Dirty, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am Dirty South. I am the game leader in Rust for the NPA server. We pretty much are a new Rust server. We're just trying to get off the ground. We do events every Wednesday. Uh, right now we're a trio server, 2X. Cool. Smasha, how about yourself? I am Smasha. I have been a part of the NPA Discord since this past February and a Rust admin, I guess going on about a month now. And I partner up with Dirty to help populate our server and work on some of those events. And then Frozen, tell us about yourself as well. Hi, my name is, uh, I go by Frozen online. I have run the Rust Admins Discord, which is a Discord for Rust Admins, which is how you guys found me. And then I run my own Rust servers on the side. They're called Wasteland. We have various uh, modded servers. We have four different machines located around the world. So we have a bit for everyone. And then... As a day-to-day job, I work as a community and communications manager at Path, who also runs Tempest, which is a hosting business. Awesome. So Rust has been a game that's been around for years now. It's probably getting close to a decade. Oh, what exactly is Rust? Where did it start? And where is it at now? Well, we started back in the start of 2010s, actually. I think it was 2013. Rust started, it started as Rust Legacy, as many people know it, where we had zombies and really poor graphics. It, it was, it was, uh, there's a charm to that, but then they just started, started to rework the game and it has turned into what we know today, uh, monthly updates, active development, and just an awesome community that just for some reason keeps growing like 10 years after it started. I personally didn't play when it was Rust Legacy, but I know some people who did. And from what they say, it was a completely just different game than what it is now. When did you start playing Smasha? So I actually just started playing when the server on MPA became a thing. I actually, my roommate had been playing it for probably six months and I used to joke around with him because he would actually stress about his base getting raided or his horses dying while he was at work. So whenever we were working from home during the pandemic, he would always have that screen up and I would just kind of make fun of him for doing that. And then when I saw it on MPA, I downloaded the game and I have put in like over 500 hours in the last two months. <laughs> Fell in love with it. So I, I watched some gameplay from previous years before a lot of the updates and it's interesting to see how much it's changed. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely a new player as well. Uh, so I started playing after we had launched our own server. Uh, and I've probably put 15 hours in. And I made it as far as building a, a stone base and then learning that a tool cupboard is necessary. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I logged back in and I thought I was raided since all that was left was like the wood stairs. Oh, I remember that. And I was like, I don't, uh, I feel sad. Then I just learned that you know, I don't know how to play the game. That's kind of the beauty of it, though. Yeah, you learn as you go. You learn lessons. <laughs> every wipe, every wipe, you learn something new. Even, I mean, I've got about a thousand hours in it now, and I'm still learning something different every wipe. How many hours have you put in Frozen? Uh, probably 8,000 hours now. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I rarely learn something new, but I think that's really the charm of Rust as well. I think that's why so many people stick around for thousands upon thousands of, of hours. And it is the fact that every wipe is different. Every map is procedurally gen- generated. So there is just something new every wipe. And you sometimes you have like AKs and you have boom and you dominate the server. Sometimes you're you're stuck with a bow. And that's that's like really cool. It It goes up and down all the time. And I think that's that's the thing people really like and then sometimes they start snowballing and all that 
all the hormones and all the stress and the anxiety that comes from from fighting and stuff i think that's what keeps people going the thing i really like about face punch is even for someone with eight thousand hours like you is you know they add new content almost you know almost every month if they're not fixing something they're adding something new so like the fishing or the submarines or the underwater labs like all that just got added this month so there's always something new you can be doing pretty much if if you want to you know yeah i like that also from from week to week and from blueprint wipe to blueprint wipe you can almost learn a different thing i recently have been trying to learn to build because on a trio team i was always farming primarily and so i was trying to learn to build but then this next month i might want to try to learn more pvp skills so and then you know you can have the you have actual farmers making the teas and, and the stores and things like that so it's just i feel like there's so many different things that you can do that it, you, you really don't get bored with it it keeps you engaged one of the most popular videos that you ever see are people trolling, people trying to bring them into trap bases. And I remember watching that before, like even knowing what Rust was, having no idea what the game was, but they're always entertaining to watch. Uh, what exactly is Path Tempest and Wastelands and Rust Admin? And uh, how do they all end up tying together? Well, it, it, it actually started out as me just owning the, the Rust Admins separated after being a moderator in the official Play Rust community and i've always had like i always thought that helping people was like really nice thing and having the reddit was nice but the pings and like the responses they were slow because reddit is a forum whereas discord is live chat so i was like well let me start this community uh let's let's get some chatting going and it slowly grew now we're i think we're about two years in now and we have two thousand members and we're partnered with Discord, which is really nice. So we recognize that this is actually a really nice place to be. And I generally feel like this is like a very competitive field when you run a Rust server. But people in here, even the largest top dogs of Rust community, they come in here and they help out newbies and they chat about stuff and they share knowledge. And that's just, it really, I, it really is a special community. And then I was like, I want to run like a community as well. I have run communities in the past before, but I haven't been running it for like a couple of years because I was too busy with work. Um, so that's when I started uh, Wasteland and I chose Tempest to host my servers because they were some of the, the best players in the field and they are really growing with their Anycast system especially. So that's how I got in contact with them. And then I've just been talking with them and... Really, they, they kind of like inspired me and, and it interests me, all this networking stuff, but the, everything that goes into doing all of this uh, networking and Anycast systems and network security and filters and stuff. So I just shot them a message and was like, I've experienced running communities before. I ran Rust and, and Raft. So I was like, let me help you guys. And uh, I was brought on. It's crazy to think that you started from just being a, a moderator to now being the moderator owner, like Rust admin owner, founder, a, way, a community founder and manager. And now your day job is now just going into your playtime as well. You know, that's pretty awesome. So that's kind of what I was curious about with doing all of these things. Do you still have time to actually play the game? I do sometimes. I'm from Denmark, but uh, I work for an American company. So I kind of I kind of work uh, American time as well. So if I don't want to play on our US servers, I'll be playing on our EU servers and they wipe, they wipe when, when I have lunch actually so i can't really start playing so we get a really poor start so i'm mainly just adminning right now but sometimes i do have a couple of buddies and they start out and get a base going and then i'll join them later yeah i feel it's important to to play on your server see how the people like what they experience how are the loot tables how are the features how is the performance you gotta you gotta do that to actually know how your business is going you gotta sample the product yeah. Yeah. When I saw how many servers you guys have, I was like, how does he do it? How does he <laughs> handle all those servers and then different wipe schedules and, and all that? It's impressive. We thought about having like a, a server that wiped every day of the week. So we have, and then oh when we have a break Sunday, <laughs> but we were like, nah, that's not feasible. So we decided to, to have two servers wiping 
the same day in the same region. So we have two EU servers wiping Monday, Thursday, and Friday. And then we have US servers that are coming soon. They'll be wiping eight hours after that uh, to, to like fit into the time zones, yeah. How many servers are you currently hosting? Right now we have six, but we aim to have 12 within the next few months. What's the average like player count for that? That's ridiculous. On wipe day, some of the servers are doing really good. Some of the servers, for example, are solo only. It only hits 150 to 200 pop. But we have to keep in mind that this is solo players, whereas our duo server, we've hit consistently the past few wipes, 500 players on our solo duo server wiping Monday. And we started the 1st of April, and that's not an April Fool's joke, but we started the 1st of April this year. So we've only been operating for like five months now. And we've already grown to be, I think we're in top 100 of the largest servers on Bellmetrics right wow. now. Wow, that's Hell yeah. awesome. So how, how long did it take for you to build up to that many servers? I mean, you probably started with one. Did, was it to cater to different players that were asking for those types of servers? No, we, we, we actually started out with just having a bunch of 2x servers that had different group limits. We, we try to stay low group limits, so solo only and solo duo and max trio because we feel there's a need for those servers and a lot of people don't enjoy getting circed on, as we usually <laughs> call it. <laughs> so we, we just started with that and that's proven to be a very, very good success. Uh, and then I think what sets us apart from other servers is that I spent literally three days rebuilding the entire loot table in Rust. So I deleted everything. There's a program for that. So you, it's called Alpha Loot. So I, I opened the editor, I removed everything, and then I built my own loot table by hand. Uh, oh, wow. And that's, wow. yeah, that took me three days. Jeez. Uh, but it's, it's really, it's really, really, really nice, and people really enjoy it. So there's still some balancing to do, even five months later, but it's constantly improving. So, yeah. What was the purpose for changing the loot table? Uh, being different, I think. So many people just set up servers and they're like, yeah, I'm going I'm to be a server owner now. I'm going to earn tons of money and donations. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert, you don't. You, you're not going to get rich running a server. <laughs> so we, we just wanted to be different. We wanted to really prove to our community you can invest your time in us because we in invest our time in you. I think that's really something that a lot of communities could learn by. It's, it's really, really important. So y'all actually started with multiple servers then? Y'all didn't start with just one? No, yeah, we bought a dedicated machine. I I, <laughs> I used my, I, I have like a, a budget that I was like, I'm using this on junk and fast food and like uh, pleasures for myself uh, monthly. And that was $500. And I was like, I'm going to start this server now and I don't want to go down in performance. So I'm going to buy the best I can possibly buy. Uh, so that's why I chose Tempest. Uh, they are expensive, but it is well worth it uh, if you are serious about hosting servers. Um, so I bought an i9 machine uh, with 64 gigs of RAM, and then I started. I think we started five servers actually, but now we've 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 expanded and we started actually splitting up the machines. So we have four machines now. And then we only have three servers on each machine, so we get more performance out of it. Um, yeah. From like just kind of where we are, how long did it take for you to actually start to fill those servers up? And did you notice like one filling up before the others? Definitely. We've we've tried a lot of different servers. We started having, I think we started with a solo duo and a solo only and a max trio, and then we had a vanilla server, and then we had a max quad. And the max quad never really picked up so we decided to close that down and then we had a vanilla server which did pretty good but it was too much maintenance because we you're not actually allowed to have plugins in the community section so it was it was a bit harder than modded where we can have more moderation tools on our hands it takes a lot of, of trial and error to find out what works and what doesn't but it, it just exploded one day from the other. Like we started out, we got those 20, 30, 40 players, slowly picked up over the wipes we wipe weekly. And then suddenly one wipe we had, like I think the wipe before we had about 80 or 90 players. And then the next wipe we had like 300. It just absolutely oh, wow. exploded. Wow. <laughs> 
That's yeah, awesome. and then and that's that that is what happens suddenly when you get above those hundred, two hundred players, then a lot of other people join because they're like, oh, this is hype up, let me join. Yeah, and then after that, people just started realizing, oh, we actually really like this there, and then they kept on coming back, and now we're hitting five hundred pop every wipe. So that's kind of it's funny you say that because we went from a quad max vanilla uh, that wasn't really working out. We were getting like ten to fifteen people per wipe, and then we put out a bunch of surveys in the rust feedback section kind of you know what team size would do you want to see what gather rate do you want to see and you know kind of just took a whole bunch of feedback and then we bumped it down to trio and we're 2x on everything except for sulfur so it's a little bit skewed towards newer players like you might not get rated day one because you know you can get more stone and metal than you can sulfur per note or whatever but uh we've actually started that kind of trend, you know, like we were, you know, hitting 20 max on a couple wipes and then like next BP wipe was 25. And then the next one was 30. This last wipe we hit 30 finally. And so like, we've constantly, you start seeing a few people come back, you start seeing, you know, familiar names. And I think we've got a really good base and now it's just kind of that next, that next step will carry us. And then after that, it'll just be kind of to the moon. That's good. That's good. Building that loyal player base, that little core player base, that is very, very important. The first joiners of every wipe populating the server, got to nurture those people. Definitely. I think we do a lot to show appreciation too, which I think helps. And uh, we do the events help. And then, you know, we look for ways to do giveaways. And we have quite a few VIP members too, which every time I log in, I check the population. And lately I've been pretty excited each time. We're, we're at a good place and we're making the right steps to, to keep building it. Yeah, something interesting that we're doing, trying to set ourselves apart, is we're doing a BP wipe every two weeks, and our map wipe is weekly. So it's kind of a, you know, you get rated off a BP wipe on, you know, halfway through on your other server. Well, guess what? Our BP just wiped, you know, come join us on on halfway through a monthly wipe, you know. Yep, and something I've noticed that, that I've seen differently the last few wipes is the players that were you know, probably rated in the first couple of days that would maybe leave until next wipe or now rebuilding and staying and not, you know, rage quitting or uh, just kind of letting it, you know, I feel like at a certain point, some people were just not as engaged, just not having as much fun maybe for some reason. And then they would leave and come back the next wipe for a few days and do the same thing. But now those players, I've seen a handful of them play full wipes the last few times, which to me feels like a success. <laughs> So besides starting the rustadmin.com, what was sort of your inspiration for starting your server? Was it just, I wonder if I can do this? Or was it more of a, you know, like, hey, the, I'm in like a good place to do this? Or a bit of both, actually. I think it was uh, from reading all those chats and helping out all those people, I realized that, okay, there's a hole here that I have the experience to feel fill. So I think I knew there was the specific audience and there was a need for servers that was run in a specific way because i hear all the complaining that people like oh people don't like when i do this on my server and people don't like when i do this so i've collected all this knowledge of what people don't like and also success so stories as well and then i kind of collected all of that into like a, <laughs> a master plan and that's how i formed my community we really we really cherish people and we really value our staff members i put a lot of uh, personal money into giving them giveaways i bought art for all of them so we actually bought on a professional designer to make them profile pictures uh, to show them appreciation so i put a lot of money into that a couple of weeks ago uh, I'm going to make hoodies and ship it out to them as well. And that really encourage, there's not, it, it's not, it doesn't feel like a business in this staff team. It feels like we're all friends. We have a Snapchat group, group going as well. And it's just, it's, it's really cool that, and, and that, that shows when they interact with the players, they're happy and they really enjoy being here and they're, they actually read up on the staff guidelines and the rules and they know what they're talking about and Every day, every day when I wake up or when I'm done with work, I go into my Discord. I look in the staff channel, there's five to 15 people sitting in there just talking. We're just friends. And 
I think that that's really special. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that sounds very familiar uh, to just like how Never Play Alone's community is, you know? Uh, a lot of us were just friends from the start, you know, hanging out in the Discord, in the community and everything. And then we started the Rust server. And now everyone's just playing together on the Rust server, slowly starting to snowball, you know? So that's some of the awesome things of, you know, starting your own community and servers and all of that. What are some of the difficulties with starting it, though? Probably having to be invisible on Discord most of the time <laughs> because so many people DM you. <laughs> I actually removed all my roles on my Discord because people just keep DMing me with reports. We have like a very specific ticketing system in place for player reports and appeals and stuff, and people just keep DMing staff. And then I think all the technical stuff as well, if we're having issues... If one of the servers crash or go down, it happens. Then immediately 20 people in my DMs. While I try to navigate my DMs as well, trying to get to the right people so we can solve this issue. So it's there's a lot of stress involved with owning. It's not a dance on roses. Oh, what does the ticket system look like? We use ticket tools as our bots. So we have applications, we have player reports, we have appeals, and we have contact staff. And then we assign, we have internal staff guidelines about how we handle tickets. We usually assign a staff member to a ticket who will investigate it. Then we use battle metrics for, for to check all our servers, to ban people, to check identifiers, and then we share we share actually our identifiers with almost all of the large communities in Rust, which is really nice because we get to see all the players that have been on their servers. So we can match IPs and then we can see, okay, this guy actually, he's been playing on this other account before. Uh, oh, and that that account actually has a game ban. So this guy is ban evading. Okay, we can ban him now. And then that's it's really cool. And that's also something I really enjoy coming together and chatting with other community owners and be like, yo, have you seen this guy? I saw he was on your server and then he left. Was he banned? What? And then they're like, yeah, he was caught cheating. And we're like, okay, we'll ban him from our community as well. Do you think there's any sort of tips for individuals or groups who want to start their own server? Is there like just something you need to like have the have a full understanding of what you're getting involved in first? And if they do need to know that, like where's a good place for them to learn? Consistency is key and persistence as well. Because you have to be consistent in your decision making and in your wipe schedules and in your servers and in everything you do, it has to be predictable. That's just how human works. They hate changes. And so does your players. And Rust is a toxic game. There's so many servers out there. So if you mess with people, they'll just find another community and then be persistent. You're not going to build the largest community in Rust over a few months. That's not going to happen. Like it is very rare. It, to see communities like Wasteland, for example, that blows up like we've we've been doing. Most communities, they take half a year to a year before they actually start growing and having a 100 plus pop every wipe. And that's something that people have to realize that's how it is. And then please, please, please do not open a server if you cannot afford it. It really sucks building this great community of yours and then having to shut down because you're not getting enough donations and you can't afford it with, with your own money. That, that really sucks because you've been pouring your heart and so much time into this project and having to shut it down because of money. That's really not like, it really sucks. So you had mentioned Rust is a very toxic game, you know? <laughs> is it? So, <laughs> so yeah, what, 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 what's some of the, uh, like, how do you combat the toxicity that, you know, is inherently going to happen in the game sometimes. Like, how do you create, like, a, a positive game environment for your servers? It starts with our players, actually. We have, I, I think the the age is, is pretty high on our servers, actually. I think most of them are, are in the end teens to, to start adult life because we don't have a lot of toxicity on our servers. And when we do staff, well, we have systems in place where we can warn people and they get like a pop-up on their screen in-game actually that says, yo, be nice. Otherwise, you'll, your chatting privileges will be revoked. Most, most people, they, they stop being toxic after that. Otherwise, we just mute them. We also have a custom AI. We actually built an AI that... Uh, inputs when it triggers on certain keywords and then it actually pushes that into like a database of toxic sentences and toxic words and it flags them and then based on on probabilities of how high the percentage is 
it will actually mute this person. So we, we don't actually need chat moderators anymore. It's very sophisticated, but it's, 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 it's very fine balance. It, it has had to have a lot of fine tuning, but that is something that really helped us uh, get rid of toxic people. Only works in English though. So when people start swearing in Turkish or Russian, <laughs> we are, that's when we have chat mods. <laughs> <laughs> And I know that you had awesome mentioned tool. earlier about your admins and how everybody kind of works together, which we have that too in our server, but I know Dirty has been around a little bit longer than me and he knows a little bit more about the systems and everything. And I'm still learning how to even recognize if somebody is cheating. And I've learned a lot from YouTube um, and from other admins who have kind of told me what to look out for but it, what would you recommend as a resource if to learn more and to be able to recognize when somebody is doing something that they shouldn't be able to do that's actually a very good question then and, and we we have this chat frequently in the rest admins discord server the answer usually is that we don't really like to share how we catch cheaters because it will only benefit cheaters Oh, I see. That's fair, though. That's but, fair thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I will share that a good thing is that you wanna you wanna key bind so you can uh, toggle constructions and trees and the world in Rust. I can I can show you some key binds after, and then you wanna use Raider and then the admin Raider plugin. I think you guys already have that properly. You can type slash Raider and then space vision, and then you can see where they're actually looking. Uh, which is really neat. And then you can see if they're looking ESP, for example, ESP is, is the most prominent cheat in Rust right now because AIM, ESC has been very good at catching AIM hacking and stuff. If you keep on tapping heads, you'll be banned. So people usually just use the ESP now. Uh, get stash traps as well. Uh, that's a plugin that places fake stashes around that people will then pick up and hope they get good items and they'll actually trigger on your end and be like, yo, this guy just picked up the stash. So yeah, that's So every yeah, everything you've said we we pretty much have. And we actually we have a Google sheet that has those uh F1 commands that you're talking about all kind of laid out. So it's you know pinned in the admin chat for people to look at. That's good. Yeah. The uh definitely helps. <laughs> and a lot of it I think just kind of comes with game knowledge too, like knowing when you can do this and when you can't and what it looks like when, you know, something just isn't right with a with a character model. And a good thing actually too that I've noticed is that when people there's a thing where people can actually debug camera out of their body. You'll be able to hear if you're spectating them, you'll be able to hear a little step. If they stand still, and then there's a little step from the character. That means they entered or exited debug camera. Mm. Oh, interesting. Then you're sure that they're cheating. Yeah. Good to know. At Dirty Smasha, did you have any other questions? I'm sure I can sit here and think of questions all day. Yeah, likewise. Most of my questions right now just go towards, you know, growing the server because that's kind of the stage that we're in. We just got to keep putting in the work and get it growing. Yep. Consistency. Sounds like you guys have something good going. Yeah. <laughs> trying to. Yeah, it's really great. I mean, I was telling somebody yesterday how, you know, I wasn't there for the first wipe. I came pretty shortly after, but, you know, between me and Dirty and the other admins, and this is something I've seen MPA wide, so it's not really specific to Rust. We all take ownership of the server because we're, we all have that main goal and, you know, common goal. And um, I think that's why we work so well together too, because we all really want the same thing and we kind of boost each other up and we collaborate really well for ideas and our players are also pretty awesome. And the new people that have come in have been really great too. So, but it, it feels like it's all of our babies, you know, we just all have that ownership and, you know. We try to bring that NPA culture to the server and it's, it's a lot like what you were saying, Frozen, you know, we want to kind of fill that be in that space of kind of the older Rust players, you know, non-toxic, just you want to come hang out, play games with some cool people. That's what we're here for. Right now, I know we're not the highest pop, but you can always tell when there was a fight in chat because someone's saying GG. You know, like it's it's not, you know, the toxic, you suck at the game, you're trash, you know, which I'm sure that'll come. But, you know, right now it's in a really good spot. That's good. Yeah, I've definitely rage quit the time or two and then been back in five minutes. I call it like timeout. Like I needed a quick timeout and then I, I come back. But yeah, I, I'm proud of 
where our server's at, and especially with the the level of toxicity that it could be that we do not see, thankfully. And uh, I know that through the events and the engagement that we keep creating week after week, um, just to keep people in there throughout the full wipe, I, th I know that we keep doing that. We keep our consistency up. It's going to grow. We're going to have numbers up there in the hundreds, two hundreds, max, <laughs> one of these days. I'm excited to see how you guys are growing. So, Frozen, did you have any questions for us or... I don't think actually, because all the questions that I have ever had about Rust, I've asked the Rust app. <laughs> <in this point. laughs> yeah. So it's like it's very limited about what I what I have, but I just want to say keep going. It sounds like uh, I've been part of your Discord for a while now, so just keep going, keep making these events, and keep interacting with people, and show that you actually care. And then I'm sure you guys will will come come join us at the top at some point. A uh, fun little question then is, would you do, end up doing this all over again, Frozen? And if you did, what would you end up trying to do differently? Yes, I would definitely, because I have a passion for building communities. I think that's something, I don't know, that's just a passion I have. I always done startups. Uh, I've always been working in startups, always wanted to, to start my own businesses. So definitely, I would do it again. I don't think there's much different I would be doing if I were to start a Rust server again. Because I really put a lot of thoughts into this community, really sat down and made like an actual plan. I have like 10 questions that I asked myself about how I want uh, this community to be run and how, what I want and, and stuff like that, which is something, it's the core values that I abide by. And that is something that we follow. So Frozen, if anyone wanted to reach out to you or learn more about Wastelands, or Rust admin, do you have anywhere that you'd like to send them to? Mainly just the Rust admins or Wasteland Discord. It is rustadmins.com or wasteland.gg. And then my name is, is frozen and then hashtag 7777. Is there anyone uh, else on the team that you'd like to shout out to or like thank us especially? Or? I want to thank my entire staff team because without them, uh, Wasteland wouldn't be what, what they are. And the users of Rust admin as well because they're just amazing and they create this this amazing community in a really toxic game, but somehow it's a very wholesome place. Dirty, do you have any, anything you want to plug or shout out to? Yeah, you can find me at twitch.tv slash dirtysouth92 or YouTube at dirtysouth92. Awesome, and smash it. Well, I don't have a Twitch or YouTube. You would only find me in the Never Play Alone Discord, but I definitely am reachable. I'm in most of the channels there. Maybe one of these days I'll stream and have a streaming channel. <laughs> Sipping with Smasha on Fridays? Yes, on Fridays, happy hour, sipping with Smasha and Sakura. <laughs> Frozen, you're welcome anytime. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Frozen, Dirty South, and Smasha. This was super cool to talk about Rust servers and learn more behind the scenes for the work involved. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Any podcast suggestions, please leave a comment below or reach out to me via the Never Play Alone Discord at discord.gg slash mpa.